As you can see by the display laid out here on the workbench, there's a multitude of router bits. For example, the one I have right, mounted here in the router is what they call a rabbit bit, which creates an L-shaped notch around the edge of the piece for installing plywood on the back of a cabinet or mounted in a picture frame. Some of the others that are laid out here in front of me are a set of roundover bits, 3 8 half, and 5 8 There's a cove, which is the opposite of a roundover. You have a chamfer, which creates a 45 degree edge, for example, making bead groups. You have an OG, which is kind of a wavy pattern. You have a pattern bit, which basically the bearing wheel and the cutter are directly in line. This works good, for example, making Adirondack chairs, where both arms need to be exactly the same. You create a uh, quarter inch masonite or plywood pattern and you screw it down, double stick tape, whatever the case is, and it creates identical cuts for you. V groove and core box bits are used a lot in sign making. Uh, decorative paneling. Straight grooves will be used in uh, dados, decorative work, but mostly a lot of the times the straight mortise and tenon, the straight grooves are used more in joinery. Dovetail is a wedge shaped bit that's used a lot of times in drawer and box construction. Parts of a fixed base router. These are two models of fixed base routers. The one on my right has a permanently fixed base that does not remove from the motor. The other one has a removable base for accessibility and mounting a router table. First thing you want to note is the switch. On the, the model on my left, it's an on-off switch. On the model on the, on the right, it is a trigger switch. This one also has a, a locking pin or locking button. If you were wanting to lock it on like in a router table or a long cut. Typically this one's not really designed for mounting a router table, but however it can be. The depth ring. This one's been removed, but it's, it would be right here because this is set up to be mounted in a router table. The depth ring on the model on my right is right here. They both have handles. Again, this one's, these have been removed, but here's the handles on this router. The collet is easily accessible with the removable base. This one you got to stick a wrench in. It's not really a big deal, but the convenience is there. The base screw clamp. On a removable base model it is a clamp. On a non-removable base it is a locking knob a lot of times. The base is the part we've been talking about which is not uh, everything but the motor basically. The sub base is the plastic on top. These are interchangeable. You could put acrylic on there, you could put a, a longer one on for making circles. Uh, circular elliptical jig, those kind of things. And finally, your, each rider will come with a wrench or a set of wrenches depending on whether it has a uh, stop or call it lock, shaft lock, that type of setup. Now that we're ready to actually operate a fixed base router, let's get everything set up. I got my work clamped in position. I like the edge of the table, it allows me to follow through and be able to complete the cut. Position the router in place. Now I'm not actually going to route right on the corner, I want to start about a half inch or so in and actually climb cut to prevent me from going around the end of the board. In this particular situation I just want to wrap it along the back edge. So I'm going to position, I'm going to go slightly backwards and then I'll continue on forward. And when I get to the end of the cut, I'm going to follow on through, creating straight. Most of my pressure will be with this right hand. My left hand is just more of a guide hand. Body position is important. I'm standing about a 45, 30 to 45 degree angle. Brace for any kickback, any resistance. Not standing flat footed. Again, hearing protection and dust mask is recommended. I choose to wear hearing protection when I'm doing a lot of routing.
of dusty during this operation, so make sure you got an apron on, a work shirt, whatever the case may be. If you notice I followed through at the end, I backed up. During my cut, I bought my clamp. So clamp position is important. Again, that's one of the inconveniences of using a fixed base router. Parts of a plunge base router. A little more features in this router. Again, it will do everything that a fixed base router will do. But this one allows you to start and stop in the middle of a piece without having to tip the router in. It will actually plunge, hence the name, into the workpiece. This is good for creating signs, it's good for creating mortise and tenon joints, stopped blind dados, variety of joints where you're not going to go all the way through. On the plunge router, you have a depth scale. You have a bar that controls how far and a locking knob. You, there, the locking bar or the depth bar goes down to what's called a turret stop, which is most of the times three screws depending on the uh, complexity of the router. Then the turret stop or the stop, the depth bar will adjust. So you actually set it for your lowest notch, the total thickness. Remember we talked about earlier that a quarter inch is your maximum depth. So if I needed to make a half inch cut, I would set this at a half inch, back it up. These are set at a quarter inch apart deliberately for that. The sub base is just as in the other routers. In fact, they're interchangeable within this brand. You could put an acrylic base on there. You could put a long, elongated one for a circle jig. On the back, you have a plunge lock lever. Certain models, it's lock, unlock. This model, when it's not being, when it springs back to here, it's automatically locked. And when you're holding it, it allows it to go up and down. And when you let go of it, it locks itself into place. Other models, you unlock, position it down, hold it, and lock it, depending on, again, the manufacturer. Handles, switch is generally the opposite side of the plunge lock lever. This base has a vacuum attachment built in. It helps to create uh, visibility. The way the acrylic is designed down here, it circulates it into a funnel and the vacuum sucks it out so it needs a small shop back attachment. You have your collet just as in every other router and this is a lot of times with a plunge router you will get an edge guide which hooks into it for creating mortise and tenon or straight grooves. To create a straight groove you need something like this edge guide or you need to clamp a board and have a guide with you. Now, if you're doing freehand sign making, that's not always the case which is what we're going to demonstrate here, just a quick couple cuts.